Hello everyone, welcome to the session. Uh, in this video, I will be discussing how to determine expected credit loss or ECL provision for trade receivables using practical calculation in an Excel worksheet. Okay, so before uh, we move on to this, uh, let's uh, familiarize ourselves with a few key concepts. The first one is PD. PD means the probability of default. So what is probability of default? Probability of default means the likelihood of default over a given time horizon. So we can calculate this uh, PD uh, based on flow rate, which I will explain you shortly. Then LGD. So LGD means lost given default. Lost given default. So LGD is the estimate of loss arising from a default. So this is calculated basically by taking the difference between the contractual cash flows due and the expected amount to be received including any collaterals. Okay, so that is the LGD. The first one is the probability of default and the second one is the uh, loss given default. Thirdly, we should know about the flow rate. So what is the uh, meaning of flow rate? The flow rate is calculated by raising the movement of receivable balances from one bucket to the other on a monthly basis till they reach the default definition. Okay, so here we calculate the flow rate to identify the probability of default by uh, comparing the movement uh, in the receivable balances from one bucket to the other bucket. Okay, so this I will show you when I explain the uh, Excel calculation to calculate the ECL provision. Then we need to uh, define our default definition or default rule. So default rule or the default definition. So this is determined uh, by the company's credit policy and specifies the number of days of credit period allowed to customers. For example, uh, if the company policy provides a 90 day credit period, then the balances exceeding 90 days will be treated as 100% default. Okay, so when you uh, when you calculate the flow rate, so when you calculate the flow rate by tracing the movement from one bucket to the other bucket, you need to pay attention to this default rate because once the bucket moves to default rate, it will be treated as 100% default. Now let's see how to calculate the flow rate. First of all, we need to set the default definition and then we need to uh, gather historical receivable balances. Now in this case, now in this calculation, I have selected from January 2018 till 2020. For three years, historical balances have been selected. So these balances should be categorized into monthly buckets based on their respective receivable aging. For example, 0 to 30 days, 31 to 60 days, 61 to 90 days, and so on and so forth. Remember, we set the default definition as 60 days. So anything beyond 60 days will be considered as 100% default. Then the flow rate is then calculated by tracking the movement of receivable balances from one bucket to the another bucket on a monthly basis until they reach the default definition. So we can observe the percentage of receivable balances moving from one bucket to another, such as 0 to 30 days bucket in January 2018 to the uh, 31 to 60 days bucket in February 2018. As you can see, the aging balances of 0 to 30 days in January 2018 was 761,188, reduced to 624,768 in February 2018 in the 31 to 60 day bucket. This shows a flow rate of 82% or flow rate or the default rate of 82% when you compare with January 2018 balance of 0 to 30 day bucket 
with February 2018 balance 624,768 of 31 to 60 days bucket. So after calculating all the respective default rates or the flow rates, uh, next step is to uh, calculate the average default rate in the respective buckets. For example, 0 to 30 days bucket, we, we have the default rate of 82% in February until uh, December 2020, 54.74. So when you take the average flow rate, so that will be 75.09 for 0 to 30 days bucket. As you can see, so I have taken from February 2018 until December 2020. So that average default rate is 75.09 and 31 to 60 days bucket, as you can see, which is 58.85. However, 61 to 90 days, the default rate is going to be 100%. 91 plus days is going to be 100% because our default definition says uh, more than 60 days, the outstanding balance or the default rate is going to be 100%. So therefore, more than 61 days represents 100% default rate. Then this calculated average uh, default rates will be applied to the outstanding balance. We call it exposure at the end of the year for trade receivable to calculate the ECL provision. As you can see from this, uh, these are the probability of default, the default rates uh, under each buckets. So this is the exposure. The exposure is the, the balance outstanding at the, uh, at the year end, which is 4.5 million, which is nothing but the balances outstanding as of 31st December 2020. As you can see, this balance is taken from the outstanding balance of uh, December 2020, which is going to be 4.5 million, 4,592,070, which is exactly the, that amount. So to this exposure, we need to apply the probability of default, which is calculated through this uh, historical trade receivable by calculating the flow rate. Having calculated the probability of default, next step is to identify the loss given default to arrive at the uh, adjusted provision. So basically, unadjusted provision will be the probability, default, probability of default times the exposure will be the uh, provisions unadjusted for the loss given default. Once the loss given default is uh, factored into this calculation, we can identify the final ECL provision, which is going to be 392,970, which is 47% of the unadjusted provision. Unadjusted provision is the uh, uh, on the exposure, uh, when you apply 75.1%, so that will be the unadjusted provision. To this, if you apply the loss given default, so that will be the adjusted provision. This LGD is uh, calculated based on the company's recovery experience for trade receivables. If the customer has made any deposits or advances, those can also be considered as recovery. By calculating the recovery rates using the flow rate, we can determine the average recovery rate. So which will be the, uh, then we need to uh, calculate the loss given default by using the average recovery rate. Now, next step is to calculate the recovery rate. To calculate the recovery rate, we can use the uh, average flow rate that we have calculated in this uh, calculation. The average default rate will be when you take this uh, total from 0 to 30 days until 91 plus uh, days. So it's going to be 83.48. So the flow rate is 83 point, let's assume 83 percent. Okay, to calculate the recovery, recovery rate, so recovery rate will be 17 percent. If the default is 83 percent as calculated based on the flow rate, average flow rate, 83 percent, and the recovery rate is 17 percent. So, therefore, if you want to calculate the uh, 
then the LGD, the LGD will be calculated uh, like we need to use this formula 1 minus recovery recovery rate times you need to take the net exposure divided by gross exposure okay so this net exposure should be uh, divided by this should be divided by the gross exposure to calculate the LGD, so we can use this particular formula, which is 1 minus recovery rate times the net exposure divided by gross exposure. Our gross exposure is, uh, as per this uh, question, as per this example, 4.5 million. Let's assume our gross exposure as 4.6 million. And let's assume there is an advance payment of advance payment of 2 million so therefore our net exposure will be 4.6 million minus 2 million which is going to be 2.6 so when you apply this formula 1 minus 1 minus the recovery rate is 17% uh, okay which is 83% again uh, times the net exposure is how much? Net exposure is 2.6 million divided by 4.6 million, which is going to be 83% times. So then we have to take, so we need to take 83%. Okay, so 2.6 divided by 4.6%, uh, which is going to be roughly 57%. So when you take these two rates, which is going to be 83 times 57, 47%. So this 47% will be the LGD. So that LGD has to be applied here to calculate the adjusted provision. As you can see, uh, the provision, uh, the ECL provision unadjusted is calculated based on the probability of default times the exposure. However, the adjusted provision, ECL provision is calculated based on the unadjusted ECL provision times the loss given default, which is the uh, the final ECL calculation. Now, if you want to calculate the, the bucketing provision, so what you can do is these uh, calculated provision can be divided based on the gross exposure so that it will give you the bucketing uh, provision. So zero to 30 days, we need to apply 35%. 31 to 60 days, we need to apply 28%. 61 to 90 days, 47% and 91 onwards, 47%. These are 47% because our probability of default is treated as 100% more than uh, 60 days, uh, more than 60 days, which is our default definition. So this is a basic method of uh, calculating ECL provision. So it is important to mention that there are other complex methods to identify the probability, probability of default and loss given default by using different models. So I plan to discuss those models in my future videos. In the meantime, if you have any queries or suggestions, please comment below. So if you are using a different method in your company, please share it so that others can benefit from your insights. So that's all for today. I'll see you soon in another video. Until then, take care and goodbye.